Welcome back, Giants fans. Week number two, game preview as the 1-0 Giants are at home against the 0-1 Carolina Panthers. The Giants are two and a half point favorites. You don't see that every day, so we're going to talk about this, talk about the matchup and what my expectations are. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Leave in the comments your predictions for week two, and let's get into it. So for the injury report, as we know right now, it is 3.30 on Friday as I'm doing this. So for Carolina, there's not really many notable injuries going on here. Nothing really worth going over. Um, Taylor Moten returned to practice in full today, so the right tackle will be there, I'm assuming. For the Giants, though, they have a pretty longer list, of course. They have cornerback Aaron Robinson, who had appendicitis. Of course, he is out out for this week. That was pretty unfortunate. Wandell Robinson is listed as out with his knee injury. It's not serious, hopefully, but yes, he will be out this week. John Feliciano returned in full. He should be good to go. Aziz Ojalari is doubtful still, so that's not what you want to see. Same for Kayvon Thibodeau. There was some optimism yesterday that he could return for Sunday, but we're going to have to wait another week, it looks like, which I'm okay with. I'd rather have the guy be completely 100%. Don't risk it. He's the future of the franchise. Don't Run him out there for week two versus the Panthers. And the last notable one is wide receiver Kadarius Toney, who has gotten plenty of attention on Giants Twitter the past 24 hours and going after some fans and not happy with what they're saying about him. But the truth is Kadarius Toney has been very injury prone so far as a Giant. He is now questionable with a hamstring injury. I would think he plays on Sunday, but... We'll see. All right, let's go over some of the Panthers team ranks. Uh, these are from last year. This is my last week of doing the last year stats. We'll just go forward with the 2022 numbers, but it was only one game. So um, what you need to know from last week is the Panthers gave up a lot of pressure to the Browns defensive line. They gave up a lot of rushing yards to Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The Browns did not have much of a passing attack because, you know, Carolina does have a better secondary, but it's also not like Jacoby Brissett is that great of a quarterback these days, so that definitely influences that. But last year, this Panthers offense, they were 14th in passing attempts, and they were 29th in yards. That is not a good ratio, being 14th in attempts, 29th in yards. Rushing offense-wise, they were 14th in rushing attempts and 20th in yards, so that's a bit better. Now, passing defense is where this team excelled last year, but that could be a bit misleading because the Panthers were the fourth best defense in terms of allowing passing yards last year, but they also had the second in least amount of attempts against them. That, of course, can be because maybe the Panthers' secondary is pretty good and teams didn't want to throw against them, or because teams mostly had a lead against the Panthers last year. I mean, the Panthers started out 3-0 last year, great month of September, and the rest of the season they suck. So, like, maybe... Teams would get ahead early against them and just not pass the ball as much in the second half. There was not much of a need for it, and maybe that kind of like inflated their secondary numbers on defense. And run defense-wise, they allowed the 18th most rushing yards last season. So the Panthers' defense is more of a strength than their offense, and that, of course, will coincide with Matt Rule, and now it's Ben McAdoo calling the plays. That's not what you want to see there if you're the Panthers' offense. But there is a completely new quarterback situation going on. Sam Darnold was their guy for most of of last year we saw some pj walker but now it's baker mayfield in 2022 and the panthers offense last week it looked like complete garbage the first half it was kind of like the giants honestly the panthers and giants had similar week ones where they, the offense did nothing the first half and then in like the third quarter, especially fourth quarter for the uh, Panthers, their offense got much better. Baker had a rushing touchdown like 12 yards out early fourth quarter. Then he hit Robbie Anderson on a 75-yard bomb for a touchdown. And the Panthers took a late lead, but then blew it on the you know, game-winning field goal by the Browns. So maybe this Panthers offense last week figured some stuff out. That's definitely possible. It's a new system. It's a new quarterback on a new team. So maybe it took Carolina three quarters to get acclimated. And maybe this week against the Giants, they are good to go offensively. Now, the matchup that scares the crap out of me the most is the Christian McCaffrey matchup versus the Giants linebackers. I have said that plenty of times now. This is a Giants defense that just last week allowed three catches for 61 yards and two receiving touchdowns to Dontrell Hilliard who is Derrick Henry's backup. That's not what you want to see. And Christian McCaffrey is a whole lot better than Dontrell Hilliard. And McCaffrey, honestly, did not get that many touches last week. I would look for Carolina to try and give him more of a workload this time around. And while the Giants defense did a great job stopping Derrick Henry last week, they held him to like 3.9 per carry. 
Christian McCaffrey and Derrick Henry are not the same type of running back. But with that said, I do think Carolina will do most of their offensive damage through the passing game, especially with the Giants facing an injury in the cornerback room with Aaron Robinson being out and possibly a guy like Fabian Moreau being the cornerback too on Sunday. Panthers offensive line, as I mentioned before, they are not that great. They drafted Iki Aquanu at left tackle. They still have Taylor Moten at right tackle. Austin Corbett at right guard is a pretty good player, but their center and left guard position, they have like Michael George and Brady Christensen at left guard that's not that great and then like Pat F lines their center that's not great either so on the interior they are exploitable hopefully that leads to guys like Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence getting some pressure up the middle and Baker Mayfield in his career versus a uh, versus pressure versus the blitz has not been that great of a quarterback the Giants as we saw in week one were one of the um, blitz happier teams in the NFL they had a 49 percent blitz percentage last week against Tennessee and Baker Mayfield in his career versus uh, Don Martindale because, of course, Baker Mayfield playing for the Browns played against the Ravens twice a year as a member of Cleveland. So these guys have played against each other plenty of times. So Baker's stats versus Don Martindale's defense in Baltimore. Now, this is a bit different. The Giants don't have the same talent that Baltimore's defense had, but this is how Baker Mayfield fared against Martindale in the past. Baker has a 58 completion percentage, took 10 sacks, and threw nine interceptions in eight games. And last year, I know he was injured with the shoulder, but last season, Baker Mayfield's completion percentage when facing a blitz was only 42%. So if you look at Panthers quarterback versus Giants defensive coordinator matchup, the Giants definitely are favored in that matchup. Now, unlike most Giants fans, I do think Baker Mayfield's pretty talented. I think he's a league average starting quarterback. I don't think he sucks, but Baker definitely has his flaws and he has his mistakes. He threw an interception last Last week, I just mentioned the stats against Martindale. They're not very pretty. But where Carolina can get the Giants are these two things. It's Christian McCaffrey against the linebackers. If you you line them up against Colitro or Tate Crowder, it's probably not a good matchup for the Giants, obviously. And also Robbie Anderson against the Giants cornerback, too. You would assume that Adoree Jackson is going to be on DJ Moore, their wide receiver won most of the game. I don't know if we'll follow him or not. We'll see. But Robbie Anderson taking the top off this Giants defense, that is my concern. Robbie had like seven or eight targets last week, had the big catches I mentioned. So that's a guy, of course, that can just you know, change a game on one play. And it sucks the Giants don't have their top two pass rushers again because, as I mentioned, this Panthers offensive line has definitely been questionable the past couple years. And if they had Kayvon uh, Thibodeau and they had Aziz Ojolari, I would like the Giants defense a lot more in this matchup. But looking down this Panthers defense, they are very talented. I mean, Brian Burns, Derek Brown, Gross Matos, Shaq Thompson, Xavier Woods, Jeremy Chin, J.C. Horn, C.J. Henderson, if you want to include him. They actually have Sean Chandler, the former Giant. I liked him, the safety we used to have. Um, And they have a good punter now, Johnny Hecker, the former Ram. This Panthers defense is not a pushover. I think the Giants offense may struggle in this game, especially if they're going all out to stop Saquon Barkley. The Giants scheme of course offensively is much much better than what we've seen the past couple years but I still have my concerns because you're gonna have guys like Sterling Shepard and Kenny Galladay and I don't even know if Kadarius Tony is gonna play but even Richie James as the wide receivers for this team now the Giants pass blocking offensive line was not that great last week Daniel Jones was sacked like four or five times seemed like he was pressured a lot in that game And facing a defensive line like this that has, you know, Gross Matos and Brian Burns and Derek Brown, even Henry Anderson used to be pretty good. Having guys like that against the Giants offensive line, that's a bit of a concern as well. So ultimately, I do think the Giants will have to lean a bit more on Daniel Jones in this matchup now. Whether he sinks or swims, that's going to be the big question of this game. I think a lot of it comes down to the quarterbacks. I'm like, yeah, that's like no shit. You know, quarterbacks are a big part of the outcome for football games. But this one, especially Baker Mayfield and his unpredictability versus Daniel Jones and his unpredictability, that's going to determine the whole game. Who makes more mistakes out of those guys? Who makes more plays out of those guys? I think these rosters are kind of even enough. And like, especially with the coaching, like I do think I would take Carolina's roster over the Giants, but I would take the Giants coaching over Carolina. So with that said, their rosters are like pretty even. And at that point, you're looking at, okay, who are the main players here? Baker Mayfield versus Daniel Jones. Who's going to make more plays? Who's going to make less mistakes? So I don't think either fan base feels good about that. I, as a Giants fan, don't have the most trust in Daniel Jones. And I'm sure a lot of Panthers fans don't have the most trust in Baker Mayfield. So that's the beauty of sports, though. It's wait and see. And we're going to see what the results put out there on Sunday. Carolina also has a couple tight ends I forgot to mention that are pretty interesting. Tommy Tremble, it's his second year to Notre Dame. Really good blocker. He made some touchdown catches for them last year 
but Ian Thomas is more of an athletic tight end, kind of a field stretcher. He had a long catch last week versus Cleveland. I think it was like, I don't know, 50, 60 yards. So they have a tight end that can make big plays, a good blocking tight end in Tremble. Carolina also has LaVisca Chenault now, the former Jaguar. I mean, he's kind of like... What do I compare him to? He's kind of like Kadarius Tony, just not as good. Like, he's just one of those, like, really good players out in space that can make guys miss and make big plays happen. But Chenault has just been pretty inconsistent. Wasn't really, I guess, fitting with the Jaguars coaches the past couple years. And I don't know. And they have Terrace Marshall, the former LSU receiver, big receiver. So honestly, I don't really have a take on who's going to win. I think I could definitely see either team winning this matchup. I think it's a pretty even matchup here. As I said, it's simple analysis, but it really comes down to which quarterback plays better. That's pretty much all I can say. We know about Baker Mayfield's history versus Martindale. We know what Ben McAdoo likes to bring to the table. 11 personnel, a lot of quick hitting passes and things like that. The Giants should have an idea of what they're getting here from Carolina, but the Giants offense has more newness to it, more unknowns, so that probably favors the Giants, honestly. But the Giants have to get more offensively from guys not named Saquon Barkley. We can't sit here and expect Saquon Barkley to have like 200 yards every week and and put the entire offense on his back. He will have games like that this year, but to expect that every single week is unrealistic. And I do think Carolina, if they're a smart team from what they saw with the Giants versus the Titans and Saquon being the entire offense in the second half outside of the long shepherd catch, they're going to go all out to stop Saquon Barkley. So we'll see. Hopefully the Giants offensive line can step up. Hopefully Daniel Jones plays a smart football game and takes care of the ball. And hopefully Don Martindale keeps getting the better of Baker Mayfield and forces him into incompletions and a lot of mistakes and possibly an interception or two or three. So we'll see. Anyway, that's going to do it. Hopefully you guys enjoy. Of course, the post-game reaction will be out Sunday night. I will do the highlights reaction like I did last week as well. Not sure when that will be out. Maybe Sunday night as well. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will talk to you guys next time.